Good morning. It's not raining this morning, unless you count raining deer. <laughs> so I'm able to get up and I'm gonna walk down to the auberge and have some breakfast, a nice breakfast. It's day 13 by my count. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate my count is. Oh, there's one very interested in the sound of my voice. <laughs> um, so lost and found my wallet. <laughs> Uh, otherwise I'm doing all right. Um, having some back spasms, which is lots of fun. Um, but hanging in there overall. Oh, and the, the back spasms aren't caused by the biking, interestingly. Uh, they're caused by the sleeping arrangements. Um, and mostly I've kept them in check, but, uh, being stuck in the tent for all day yesterday hasn't helped that a bit. Okay, I've walked out to the end of the jetty here and I'm gonna do a few videos that will later become an introduction to Anticosti Island for people coming off the boat. So it'll look a bit like a travelogue and I'm gonna compile them into a separate video, but for now it's part of our video record as well. Welcome to Port Menier, or in French, Port Menier, the largest and only town on Anticosti Island and the only seaport on Anticosti Island. There's a jetty, it's a kilometer long, it's one of the largest in North America. This guide is for you who have just arrived here. If you have a bicycle, it'll be in the shipping container. It uh, looks a bit like that, except it'll be open and it'll have bike racks inside. Your bike will be secured inside. If you've shipped yourself anything, the uh, shipping office is right here at the end of the jetty. And also, in an emergency, there's a telephone booth. You'll find, maybe, that you have no internet connection, no cell phone connection. There is a cell tower way out there. As of right now, it's not working. As of September 2022, it should be working and you should have cell signals. Joy. It was right around here. I had my first problem when I first landed on Anticosti. I got on my fully loaded bicycle and discovered that my front wheel was wobbling. Got a kilometer to go to get to the end of the jetty. If you're camping, you're gonna have another two kilometers after there, after that. So be ready for a three kilometer ride right off the boat. So as you're walking into Poor Menier, let's get your bearings a little bit. Your campsite is gonna be off to the left. Most of the town services are to the right. Your information booth will be straight ahead. The airport is out over the horizon. Okay, you've reached the end of the jetty. Now remember, it's getting dark, everything's closed. So there's no place to go except the campsite, but some things to note, right in front of you there, that's the info booth. Over to the right, that church is in the front, that's the museum, and in the back it's the church. That's the general store, and that back there is the hardware store. I'm gonna go to the general store and take some shelter from this rain, it's getting a bit much. Looks like there's a line up here at the gas station, which is right in front of the general store. Doesn't look like your average gas station. Of course, you're riding a bike, you don't need this. This is the grocery store, and it's a pretty well-stocked grocery store. You find pretty much everything you need here. And a lot of stuff you don't. And water, good water. like the town square for Port Menier. There's the grocery store back behind me in the gas station. There's the hardware store, town center up there, and here's the museum and church. More parking than you'd think you'd need for 250 people, but it seems to be pretty busy all the time. I know, I hung out here while it was raining. Wow. 
what they don't have is isobutane or whatever it's called, or unless this is it. Uh, this is just butane. So if you're camping, make sure bring extra fuel just in case. Here's another quick look at the front of the church, which is also the museum, and the rest of the church is around the side. Okay, so as you're walking in, there's the Info Touristi booth on your left. Now, out that way, that's the Trans Acostian Highway. You don't want to go that way unless you're going across the island. You'll be going that way to get to the campsite. So your best way to get to the camp is to cross this little bridge here. There's a road up there called Port Manier, which is the main road and that's where you'll be going. This is the shortest route to that. And then once you cross the bridge, you'll turn to the right. See, there's the sign that directs you to the camping. Uh, it's a dull red on gray and followed by the deer. Okay, I said corrected. It's Rue de Meunier, not Rue Porte Meunier. So walking along Rue Meunier, there's the auberge to my left. Even if you're not staying there, you can go there for breakfast and keep going. you got about a kilometer to go. At the airport sign, keep going straight. As you're approaching the sign that marks the end of the pavement, you're going to see another one of those dark red on dark gray camping signs. Turn on to that dirt road. That's actually the main road. Okay, you should be looking for this sign. It's kind of hard to see. It's on the left-hand side of the road, just as the road is turning. Maybe a hundred feet up, you'll see another sign indicating you should turn to the left. There is not a hotel up here. <laughs> I thought there was a hotel called Chateau Meunier. No, it's the ruins of the original Chateau Meunier. And you've arrived at the clearest campsite sign so far. All the campsites are off to the right. To the left is the campsite service building. It's got a washer and dryer, showers, toilets, water on the side, a power outlet. Note, if you want to use the washer or dryer, you will have to have a dollar fifty and quarters. So bring them with you, otherwise you'll have to search through town. And I had a bit of an issue getting quarters today. Nothing major, but uh, you know, if you want to do laundry and you can't do laundry, it's a bit frustrating. But anyhow, all the campsites are down there, and uh, we'll show that in just a sec. Site's a bit tricky to navigate in the dark. Here's where we were with the services building just off to our left and the campsite to the right. Here's the road to the campsite, it's just ordinary gravel. If you turn off to the left, that's a car site, number one. And then there are two, three, four, all pretty close together for some reason. Then you keep going. Number five, the site that everyone wants. And then there's some open air places where you can have public fires and then the ruins of the chateau. There's also, a big pavilion right around here. So it's loops within loops, but you get used to it pretty quickly. Oh, did I say 125 to use the washer and dryer? I stand corrected. It's 250, two dollar coins and 225 cent coins. This is for the dryer and that's for the washer, same thing. There, by the way, is the power outlet. Very nice to have. And here's the fork in the road, campsite one to the left, the others to the right. Though, as I say, it's a loop. And I'm back at Shea Mario's. So I've spent a lot of time in this position on this trip. You might as well see this too. It's me on my beloved pillow. Uh, sometimes I use the uh, cover on, sometimes as now I don't. My warm thing that I bought 
when I knew it was going to rain for a couple of days. And the rest of my tent. Uh, here I am in all the clothing that I own that's not bicycle clothing. <laughs> um, so I had a lot of fun today with the, you know, doing the guided tour and all of that. And, and I'm sure I'll have a lot of fun putting it up. And I hope it's useful information for people. But of course, the purpose for me coming out here wasn't to give people a guided tour. That's just a response to the uncertainty that I faced when I got off that boat. And it was a lot of uncertainty. But, uh, you know, I, I've sort of been thinking about how to talk about this. When I got to Bédé La Tour, and I'm lying just like this, or maybe on my back, I'm not sure, in my tent, uh, all alone out there, and as I said at the time, like 65 kilometers away from anyone. Actually, I think it was probably about 45, but yeah, who's counting, right? Um, and... What was interesting to me is that uh, there was this thing where I felt that whatever it was that I had been missing that I was trying to fill with this trip had been filled. And uh, it might have just been me arguing with myself that it's okay to take a ride back. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I think it was more than that. Uh, I had reached, you know, the final campsite. Uh, you know, I would have loved to have gone further, but that wasn't a realistic possibility. But I had made my minimum objective. Um, to get there, I had cycled uh, just from uh, Port Meunier. Uh, let see, 162 plus 15 plus 20. I keep running that number and I forget what it is, 182, 197, something like that. And that's not counting the loop that I took to the uh, the West Cape. Oh, the different colors, that's just reflecting the clouds and stuff as they go by. Uh, and, you know, and I came up with the concept of the easy kilometer versus the hard kilometer while I was out there. These were hard kilometers. These were as hard as they get. Uh... Both wheels on my bike were wonky, are still wonky, um, you know. So it was it was a challenge. Now I have to tap to manage my storage. There'll be a part two, just one sec. Okay, I got less than five minutes of video, so I have to figure this out fast. <laughs> so uh, for me, I'm, I'm not really sure what it was that was missing. But I think part of it was understanding what it was that uh, I was committing myself to and being, being willing to commit myself to it, um, being willing to undertake this challenge, being able to undertake this challenge, um, and, and maybe even just being in a place where I'm all alone depending on myself, although then, I, as I discovered, depending on others as well, but in this really challenging environment. Um, and part of it was just my sense of adventure. I wanted to see a place that I'd never seen and I kind of built it up over time in my mind as I do. So, and it was probably more than that too and I'm not sure what it will be by the end. But, you know, I'm glad I did it. Um, it's been really painful at times, uh, but not as painful as I thought it would be. Uh, it was really frightening at times, but not as frightening as I thought it would be. Um, and I'd do it again in a minute. But, and here's the important thing, I think. I don't think I have to do it again. I might want to, but I don't think I have to. So anyhow, that's it for today. Um, and uh, I've got another day of cycling tomorrow. I'll free up some video space and then the next day on the boat and, and we'll carry through to the end of the trip.